A very common problem that I need to solve when I'm working on web or mobile applications is how to take data that might be formatted differently than I need it to be, especially data that I have no control over, such as user-generated input and make sure that it matches a specific format. So in this case, I want to make sure that every string that I get, and that may be a sentence, it may be a single character, but if it's a sentence, I want to make sure that I can capitalize each first letter of each word. And so I have a set of example data here, and I'm wanting to show, and this is a real life application problem that I have solved is I want to have page titles, but I want page titles to have the first letter of each word capitalized. And I don't know what the formatting is going to be when it comes in from the database or from the API. So I might have an example where all of the letters are lowercase. I might have one that's perfect, where each first letter of each word is capitalized. I might have one that's just randomly weird, and I don't want to have that. It's where I have just random uppercase and lowercase characters, and then I might have an empty string. So I need to make sure that I take all of those situations into account, and then I can put out some output where it matches the format I'm looking for. So how can you do this? Well, I like to take pretty much any problem that I have on the programming side, and I like to try to break it into as small of chunks as possible. That is really one of the biggest keys to success I can teach developers. And so in this case, I see two processes that need to happen. One is I need to be able to capitalize a word and then I need to perform that task on every word in a sentence. So because of that, that tells me that I need two functions. So I'm going to build out two functions, one that is going to capitalize the first letter of a word, and then I'm going to have a second function that can take in an entire sentence, and then it will iterate through, and it will run that capitalized word function on every word. And so we're going to use TypeScript, and but you can also, this is something that the code's going to be very similar in JavaScript as well. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to build our capitalize word function. So I'm going to create a function. It's going to be a fat arrow function. So I'm going to say capitalize word. And this is going to take in a string. And this is going to be of type string. Obviously, if you have to build this out in vanilla JavaScript, then you're just going to have one, the str is an argument. And then inside of here, I am going to set up some variables. So I could try to do this all on one line, but I think it makes sense to separate this out. I first want to grab the first character of this string. So how can we do that? Well, I'm going to use the car at function, and I'm going to store it inside of a variable. So I'm going to say const first car, and I'm going to take the string, and then I'm going to move the, this on each one of these function calls on different lines just to help with readability. And so I'm going to say car at and then I'm going to say zero. So this is going to give me that very first character. Now next, I want to call to locale uppercase on this, and that, that is a function. And this is very similar to uh, just to the function to uppercase, but to locale uppercase allows us to work with different locales, but it's not really a, a big issue. You can use either one of those functions. So that's the first one. And now what I want to do, that since that's giving me the first character, now I want to get all of the rest of the characters, and then I want to have each one of those switch to lowercase. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to store a variable uh, in again, and so this is going to be rest of string. I'm going to take in that same string, and then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the substring function. So substring. 
And with substring, you have two potential arguments, but we're only going to use one. So as you can see right here with what's popping up in the text editor, it says that substring takes one required argument, and that is where we want the string to start, so or what we're grabbing to start. So we already grabbed the very first character at the zero entry. Now I'm grabbing the entry of one, which is technically the second character. And when you only pass in one value to substring, it's going to give you the characters that start at that index all the way to the end. So we're not going to pass in a second one. And then on that string, I'm going to call to locale lowercase. And that's a function. So make sure you end it with the parens just like that. And now we simply have to return the value. You have multiple ways of returning this value. I'm going to use string interpolation to do it. So you could say return first car plus rest of string just like this. I personally like using string interpolation here. So I'm going to use a backtick followed by the dollar sign, wrap up first car inside of curly brackets, and then I'm going to do the same thing with no space in between to the rest of the string, and then end the back tick. So let's see if this is working. So here I am going to call capitalize word, and then let's just pass in, you know, something just like this, and let's see what this output is. There we go. First letter is capitalized. And now let's do something kind of weird. So let's capitalize some things in the middle here. And as you can see, that is working beautifully. So even if we pass in uppercase characters in the middle, this is going to set them lower and the first characters going to be capitalized. Now, it's always good to make sure that this works even if no string is sent. So if no string is sent, it returns an empty string. So this is good. It doesn't blow up, uh, nothing like that. Uh, thankfully, JavaScript and TypeScript are pretty good at covering those types of edge cases. So this is working. This is working nicely. Now, so we've solved the first part of the problem. We now have the ability to capitalize a word. Now, how can we capitalize each word in a string and then return the string? Well, Another the answer is that we're going to write another function and let me give us a little bit of room here. And so I'm going to say this is going to be another fat arrow function and let's just call this capitalize each word. It's going to take in a string of type string again. And it's going to be a fat arrow function. And in this case, just so you can kind of see the difference, because it's always good to practice this, I'm going to use an implicit return. So as you saw inside of capitalize word, I used the curly brackets here right after the fat arrow function. And whenever you do that, if you're going to return some data, like we're returning a capitalized word here, uh, like on line 14, we have to return something. Well, if you use just a set of parens, then you don't have to type the return keyword. Now, the key with this is this only works if you're going to write a single line of code. You can break it into, uh, you can do kind of what we did here for formatting, where you can break this in and organize them on separate lines. But JavaScript actually combines all of that. Uh, but what it means is you can't, if you're going to use this implicit return, you can't set a variable and then run a loop and then do a bunch of processes and then return something at the end. You have to just have it run one process. And that's what we're going to do. So inside of these curly brackets, we do not have to type the word return. That's going to happen for us automatically. And so now I can say string. And then now I'm going to split the string up. So remember what our goal is. We want to be able to treat each one of these words independently. And that's what split's going to let us do. So what we're going to be able to do, and we, let's actually see what this looks like. Make sure I don't have any syntax errors here. Yeah, so you can see what split does. So if I call page title one, and then I call split, 
and pass in an empty string here, you can see this gives us an array of each one of those words. That's exactly what we're looking for because our goal is that we want to have the ability to call our capitalized word function on each one of these elements. And that's what split's gonna let us do. So we're going to turn page title, or each one of these page titles, into an array. Then from there, we can use the map function, which is gonna iterate over each one of the items in the array. It's gonna take a word. Now we could call this anything, but it, I think it makes sense to call it word here. You could call this I, you could call it X, you can call it whatever, that's up to you. And then we're gonna use another fat arrow function with an implicit return. And we'll say that we want to call capitalize word, pass in word, and then that is going to iterate over that entire collection and it's going to change each one of those items. It's gonna capitalize it and then it's gonna return it back. And then lastly, all we have to do is, because this is going, if we left our code like this, and let's do it, let's just kind of see what it looks like. So if I say capitalize each word, and I pass in you know, page title one, just like this, you'll see that this is outputting an array. So that's close, and you can see that this is actually working. This is giving us each one of those array items, each one of those words is capitalized. So, so far, that is what we're wanting, but now we need to return it as a string. So to do that, I'll say dot join, and then we're gonna pass in a string and then have just an empty space here. So that is going to essentially do the exact opposite of what Split did. Split looked at every one of the empty strings and it said, wherever you find an empty string, split that into a new array element. Join is gonna say, I want you to take each one of the array elements and then I want you to add a space between them and then put them together and then add that all and return all of that as a string. So that is everything that we should need. So now if I call this, so if I wanna call capitalize each word and call page title one on it, then you can see that worked beautifully. Let's do this with the other three. So we had three of these, we had page title two, three, and four, and there you go. That is working beautifully. It doesn't matter what is getting passed in, it is going to take each one of the words, it's gonna capitalize the first character, and then it's gonna join all of that together so that you end up with your formatted string.